That's where the water level's supposed to end up here by the time they're finished with the project. Can you imagine just losing your house over the water's rise? All of this is gonna be totally buried. They didn't just build the dam big, they built this whole place big. I'm Jeff Hutchins, and I'm a photographer. I'm Peter Hutchins, and I'm a filmmaker. We grew up in China, and now we're going back. To capture China in its moment of change. And there's only one way to do that. To get lost. That's the Yangtze River down there. OK. <laughs> And we're playing a little eight ball in one of the coolest locations we've ever shot pool in our lives. What do you think, Peter? Are we going to get uh, taken into cleaners? I think so. These guys look like pros. Oh, there you Ooh, go. We're solid. Solids. <laughs> it's a matter of national pride, Pete. Come on. Pete and I haven't come all this way just to play pool. Uh, next time, next time. If you want to see the epicenter of change in China, the Yangtze River is where the most drastic developments are happening. For thousands of years, the Yangtze River has been China's major artery for travel and trade. But now, it's a whole new game. Go, Jeff, go. <laughs> it's got to be the coolest place I've ever played. We start out in Wushan in central China, home to a stretch of natural beauty unlike any other in the world the famous Three Gorges. This picturesque part of China has been the muse of China's poets and painters for centuries. And the Three Gorges is where the Chinese have undertaken one of the most ambitious construction projects ever attempted, the Three Gorges Dam. The dam is located 120 kilometers downriver from Wushan. When completed, the dam will be the world's biggest producer of hydroelectric power. It will turn a significant portion of the Yangtze River into a giant reservoir, flooding 632 square kilometers, affecting well over a thousand towns and villages. So this might be the last time for anyone to see some of the places we're going to visit. So he doesn't like the old city, and you like the new city. Okay. It's time for us to see for ourselves what's going on in the Three Gorges region. And to do that, we'll need a boat. All right. First things first, we gotta find our boat. <laughs> oh, check it out, they rolled out the red carpet for us. Where's the boat? Yikes. Uh, huh. Well. <laughs> oh, check it out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The Huckton's. We're, <laughs> Close we're on this mammoth. I'm not quite sure what I was expecting, but this seems a bit excessive. Hi, welcome, how are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Morning. Wow, good morning. Yeah. So this is a boat for uh, us and 200 of our closest friends? Right, right. Look at the size of this. We wanted a boat for just two of us. This is, this is huge. When the boat finally moves away from the dock, we start heading upstream toward the three lesser gorges under a dense, low sky threatening rain. This is the sort of iconic China look to me, you know, where it's just, it really is that layer after layer of smog and cloud and, yeah. It's a little dreamlike, like it just fades away into a mist. Yeah, it does. This is gonna be exciting. Yeah. You think they have a karaoke system on board? As we pull away from town, the river begins to take on the look and feel of a much older China. Except for the huge bridge coming up. We're about to enter the first of the lesser gorges, Dragon Gate Gorge. The water's supposed to come high enough on this bridge that it's like lapping right at the edge. 
Well, I saw the 175 meter signs around. That's where the water level is supposed to end up here by the time they're finished with the project. Which is amazing to think <laughs> about that all of this is going to be totally buried. The river has already risen about 130 meters since the dam was started in 1993. But when it's finished, the river behind the dam will have risen another 20 meters, creating a massive reservoir with the water level as high as a 50-story building. And drowning 4,000 years of Chinese history in the process. The water's a little too green. Yeah, it's, a, it's like the janitorial staff just came through and dropped in some, some green dye this morning, isn't it? The jade color comes from industrial pollution and the foliage that is now underwater. The Yangtze is the third longest river in the world behind the Nile and the Amazon. But unlike those two rivers, the Yangtze used to be very unpredictable and dangerous. Every decade or so, the Yangtze has had major floods, killing thousands of people. Just in the last hundred years, floods have killed an estimated 300,000 people trapped in the Yangtze River Basin. The Three Gorges Dam is supposed to change all that. Plus, provide China enough hydroelectric power as 18 carbon-spewing coal-powered plants. It's been a dream of Chinese leaders for almost a century, and now it's finally happening. The dam is being touted by the Chinese government as incredible progress, but others aren't so sure. So we want to find out for ourselves from the people who are directly affected. This is the biggest relocation project that's ever been done. It's over, you know, over a million people that are being taken from their homes here and kind of, you know, saddled up with some new place. I think they have a couple of options. They can either move to a village that's built just a little higher up than their previous one, or they can, you know, move somewhere completely different. A lot of people are going out to some of the big cities, Chongqing, and I mean, totally shifting their lifestyle. That's got to be such a weird thing to see your home and your land and everything just gradually fade away as the water comes up. You know? In a few years, there's not going to be land to farm anymore. It's all going to be buried underwater. There are a few places I think that you can pull something like that off, and China is definitely one of them. You think that one's going to be underwater? That Just island? the island there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. Look at that one. It's right on the water. Some of the negative effects are just beginning to surface, like landslides, water pollution, and damage to wildlife along the river. For some, this is considered the price for progress. Others are quietly concerned about the consequences. But in China, it's difficult for those voices to be heard. The government would rather point to the economic advantages and flood control the dam has brought to the Yangtze. Everywhere we look, we see construction underway like the towering bridge we're about to pass under. Wow, so this, this highway is supposed to connect Langzhou to Hangzhou. It's like over a thousand miles. Yeah, there really are cranes everywhere here, aren't there? <laughs> I mean, this is such a feat to cross the river here. Wow, you can barely make out the people up there. It's huge. But construction isn't the only thing adding to the new look of the Yangtze River, as we're about to see. Mr. Zhang is part of the boat crew. Where did you grow up? Oh, you grew up in the city of Dacheng. So I've heard there's a new city and there's an old city there. 
，呃，你你比较喜欢哪个新的，呃，或是呃，还是哪个老的？我现在看的话，就是新城是比较繁华的，但是还是怀念老城的。So it's it's cleaner in the new city. It's more comfortable. The environment's better. Okay. But are are there things you miss about the old city? 你你呃怀念什么？呃那个那个老城市。哎，我怀念了，就是你呃我我在那里生长，从从小的时候生长在那里，一直种地，就是。这个家生活了这么多年了，我肯定怀念自己的家，就是老家呀。Yeah, I think it's natural to love the place that you grow up in. So I, we're going today actually to Dacheng. 我们今天去大城看一下。哦，欢迎欢迎欢迎欢迎 ，Welcome. Okay, great. Just around the corner, we're about to see one of the newly rebuilt cities, while the old city lies deep beneath the river nearby. We wonder what the new city feels like, and what was really swallowed up by the river. Our boat pulls into Dacheng, a city that's only just a few years old. The 1,700-year-old city of the same name is one of the casualties of the Yangtze's rising waters. So apparently, the old town of Dacheng is buried somewhere underneath this water. But what they did before they flooded it was they took it and numbered every single brick and every piece of timber, and put it back together brick by brick, piece wow. of timber by piece of timber, and it's somewhere inside these condos. We have a couple of hours layover in Dacheng, so we decide to see how they've reassembled the ancient city. I'm really curious to see what it looks like. If it looks like a real old town. This is obviously the new town. <laughs> the old city is just a few steps away, but we soon realize that the old city doesn't seem all that old. So this is supposed to be the old city. This is not looking promising. <laughs> <laughs> These stones don't look very old. It costs a lot of money and labor to bring up a whole city stone by stone. So they probably just decided to recreate an old city. And hoped nobody would notice. I mean, it looks more like a Hollywood set or something. I, I mean, I was really expecting an old city. <laughs> they tried, but uh, so yeah. no dice. So I guess the real Da Chung is still flooded, yeah. buried under the water. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, you know, as we've been walking around and just talking to people, they've like people have seemed. Ni hao, shi fan zhe ge di bang ah. 老大爷，您好。你好。啊，您好。How How old do you think he is? Uh, 您多大年纪？九十。九十，真的。九十 ，ninety years old. Ah, so he's seen the old city and the new city. I mean, for sure. So, 你比较喜欢这个新的城市，还是那个老的？新城呐，新城的修国家是政府修的很好啊。Oh, he likes the new city better than the old one. 好，谢谢，谢谢您。哎，谢谢您。哎呀，再见。再见，再见。好的。He likes this place. I mean, everybody actually, you know, seems to be pretty happy with this. Walking through a back street, we come to a small fenced-off area, and a possible clue as to what happened to the remains of the real old city. Oh, there are those numbered logs you're talking about. So this is where the logs and the bricks really ended up, in a junk pile. So much for rebuilding the old city piece by piece. Just a few blocks away, we get a glimpse of the possible future of Da Chung. Tourism, complete with guides and souvenir stands. Back on the boat, we travel through the next of the three lesser gorges, called Misty Gorge. The narrow waterways of the lesser gorges allow us to get a feel for what it was like to travel along the river centuries ago. Back in the old days, enterprising Chinese warlords would put iron chains across the water to stop boats and collect a river tax. The incredible scenery that we're seeing today is probably pretty similar to what ancient travelers would have seen, and more likely than not, the same Simeon Welcoming Committee greeted them from the trees. Hey, check it out, monkeys. <laughs> That's awesome.
awesome. I was born in the year of the monkey, so it's appropriate. The sight of monkeys leads Jeff into some unhappy childhood memories. I'm just glad we're out of range, though. I don't think they can hit us with their own feces. <laughs> like monkeys usually love to do. <laughs> Maybe only for you, man. That's never happened to me. Have you ever gone to the zoo and had that happen? No. Oh. Maybe it is just me. Uh, <laughs> More than 20 years. Jeez, that's pretty good. The boatman tells me that raising the river will make it much easier to steer the boat by making the waterway deeper and wider. No more strong currents and shoals to worry about. Like almost everyone else we've talked to, he thinks the dam is a great idea. The Three Gorges Dam project is controversial, but so far everyone's too careful to say so. We've heard there's a water festival at the next stop, so we decide to see what it's all about. And we see that there's dragon boat racing going on, something Pete and I have always wanted to try. So this is dragon boat racing. This is a little more rainy than the normal time. Can you see how ma? The weather's good, right? Good for dragon boat racing. Nihao. Laban. Laban. Oh, the big man. Nihao. All right, so, so where do we start? I see everybody's got these, uh, Maji. Hey. Yo, Mayo, can we have two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ah, uh, here we go. All right. I'm being knighted. It's a touching moment. It is a touching moment. All right. Even the way they race dragon boats reflects the change that's come with the damming of the river. As the water gets deeper, it's easier for dragon boats like these to run all year round. And since the river is calmer, it gives a couple of new paddlers like us a chance to try it out without battling the current. But we still need to get mentally prepared. Cool, so how do they get pumped up here? Oh, oh yeah, woman, it's the best. It's the best. Okay, go, go. Don't leave me hanging, don't leave me hanging, don't leave me hanging. It takes me a moment to realize that we're not exactly dressed like some of the others. Pete, I'm thinking the scariest thing about this is the, uh, the frequency of speedos here. They're harder core than we are. They're out here in their underwear, it's raining. It's not the best day for a dragon boat race. Oh. Oh. A shout goes out from the crowd whenever it gets the first taste of water. All right, Jeff, so what do you think our chances are on this boat? I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> Oh, can we, can we swim? Yeah, we can yeah. swim. Yeah, we can. <laughs> it's kind of surprising how fast the dragon boat can go just using muscle power. I'm guessing we're doing a little over 10 kilometers an hour. About the same pace as a good marathon runner. That's exactly right. English, we're number one. 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 We've been told that over half of all the cranes in the world are being used in China. Everywhere you look in Wuxian, there's construction going on. The city has its more prosperous shopping districts and its poorer sections, just like any city. 
But there's something about the concrete apartment building sitting on the side of a really steep hill that just seems unreal to both of us. Some engineers are wondering if these hills will be able to withstand all this construction, especially as the rising waters compromise the bedrock. We spend the next morning, another rainy one, shooting some pictures and taking in the scenery. The thing that strikes me the most is how much China has changed since we lived here as kids. Back then, most people walked or rode bicycles. Now, it's got one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And you don't have to be rich to own a car. Wow, this place is just funky, isn't it? Yeah, it feels, it feels like a facade that just sort of sprung up overnight, you know? With all the construction projects sprouting from the hillsides, this stretch of the Yangtze River would be unrecognizable to rivermen from the past. But for a glimpse of the Yangtze region that's closer to the one all those poets and painters raved about, we'll need a smaller boat to reach some of the more remote parts of the river. Are we number 16 here? I guess. Looks like they're uh, planning a bonfire with life jackets. <laughs> Yeah. We've left the main river and moved into a smaller tributary called the Madu River. We want to see what it might have been like on the old Yangtze. And further up these smaller rivers, we can get a feel for what it was like before the waters started to rise. There's no wind and the water is as smooth as glass. The acoustics are strange. You can hear everything and nothing. Further on, we see a group of people, on a boat, singing, in the middle of nowhere. It seems to fit with the whole dreamlike landscape. When we ask the boatman why they're singing, he explains that the gorges have always echoed with the sound of women's voices. It's part of the mystique and tradition that makes the gorges unique. And what are the songs about? Boys and girls looking for love. So you sing the song to look for someone to marry. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's nice. You got pretty good range with your voice. <laughs> so you so you go up and down the river on the boat. Chang Iran. Yes, sir. Looking for love and yes, singing sir. a song. Yes, sir. He sounds impassioned, and there's something about the acoustics out here that would reach any girl for kilometers around. I guess there was always a river along here. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's just never this high. As we move deeper down the flooded gorge, yeah. the river narrows and the slopes get steeper. We haven't seen another boat for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, they could really be taking us anywhere right now. What do you think? Do they look trustworthy? I think so. How do you say help in Chinese? Banchu. 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 Whatever, yeah. Yangtze has so much more of like a mystical feel than I was, in, you know, than I was anticipating. Because we've been on other rivers in China, you know, but there is something that's a little bit kind of surreal about this place. I don't know if it's the water. I mean, it's it's like a bright jade color. Yeah. You know, those Chinese paintings you always see. Yeah. It's just uh, 
Yeah, it's really cool. The gorge part really stands out. Yeah. It just shoots right up to the sky. Yeah. I think it'd be fun to uh, to climb up on some of those places there, you know, and jump in provided the, the rocks are either cushiony or very deep on the sides. Yeah. I love it too that the hillsides seem like they just you know, they're, they're just running down and the water just yeah. happens there. I mean, the, all the trees just keep going right down the water. The boatman tells us he lives just a few minutes down the river and asks if we'd like to see his place. This is your house? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep, this is house. The boatman is the only one in his family to work on the river. Everyone else is a farmer, but not for very much longer. So, this day will not be water? Man, so this farmland here is definitely going to be underwater. Wow. Huh. Uh, Xian uh, yeah. Everyone who lives here are farmers, huh? Strangely enough, this huge country has very little actual farmland, so every tiny scrap of dirt is used for farming. They're growing beans and cabbages here now, but in the next few years, the farmers will have to find some other kind of work. I keep imagining what it must have been like to work these fields year after year, looking at that spectacular view. We come to his house. I'm surprised to see a small swimming pool out front, facing the river. He tells us that when the dam is finished, the rising waters will come up just to the edge of the swimming pool, precisely 175 meters, or so the government says. <laughs> so the flood will actually come right up to oh, here, wow. okay. and there will be water around here. Wow. So the, <laughs> the house is How is the house not going to be wet, but the pool is? That's a pretty gutsy building decision. <laughs> Man, that sounds like some fuzzy math. <laughs> yeah, it's a little close for comfort. I know. Yeah, I'm glad great. I don't have to make that call. It turns out we've misunderstood. This property is already abandoned. He lives further up the hill. <laughs> Thanks for showing us up here. Man, we got a lot of family here. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, wow. Oh, cool. Is this the kitchen? Oh, this is the kitchen. Looks like good food. He gives us a brief tour of his home. This is the workshop slash bedroom. It's your old friend, it's your old friend. <laughs> He's really calling someone. <laughs> <laughs> Cell phone service can be patchy in the mountains. I think he keeps the numbers of all his friends on the wall here. <laughs> Satellite dish. Oh, nice. Yeah, you need your television. Wow, this is a great view. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, what are they going to do after all this is flooded? I'm uh, not sure. Shui Zhang Li Yihuo, the Jelly Duran, some of them. He's in Panchen. Okay. okay, so some people are leaving, other people are going to higher ground. Oh, okay, so they're more or less okay here. Our host says he's going to stay right here and hope global warming doesn't lengthen the monsoon season. A bit further upriver, we see the first tangible sign of what happened to the homes that were in the flood zone of the rising waters. Hey, Jeff, check it out. It's a house. Oh, wow. Man, 
Look, you can see the steps down in here. our place back home. That's what strikes me about all this stuff, you know? I mean, can you imagine just losing your house over the course of a, a month or so as the waters rise? That's, you know, that's crazy. Well, this this thing, I mean, that's halfway submerged, and it's yeah. been like that, I guess, just for a year. Well, so, and I'm sure the rest of it's going to go when they do that last stage of flooding, you know? Another, what, around 20 meters? Yeah. I don't think this is what they, the builders had in mind. <laughs> you still see signs of people. Not quite sure what happened. Wow. Wood pile. You think anyone's here? I don't know. Back on our boat, we noticed that a smaller skiff has attached itself to us. Hey, Jeff. Yeah? What do you think the extra boat's for? Uh, this is one of those, I think, the flat bottom kind that you can actually take further up into the river. So, uh, Mr. Chen, I was talking to him earlier, and he was saying that you can actually see what the Yangtze used to look like up there. So he's taking us up there, straight kind of heart of darkness style. Wow. Hello, people of the Yangtze River. The floods are coming. Iron your swim trunks and pack your bags. And monkeys, we have no more bananas. As we get into shallower water, we see a man on a bamboo raft, the kind people have been using for centuries. Hey, check this guy out. Wait, so it must be shallow where he is then. Oh, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe he's just going for a workout. He's using that as a paddle or he's hitting along the ground? He looks like he's stranded. <laughs> this is something we've got to try. In past centuries, when the water was shallow, this was an ideal way to get around the gorges. Now that the water is rising behind the dam, there are fewer and fewer places a pole will reach the bottom. And a few years from now, it's possible that these little bamboo rafts will have mostly disappeared. Jeff, you know this was voted most efficient way to travel the Yangtze. <laughs> yeah. See, I was imagining something a little more glamorous. This sort of feels like a punishment of some kind. I know. Kind. Like, you two go out on that raft and don't come back until you've made friends. <laughs> It's like when we used to get stuck behind the fridge when we were kids until we made up. Yeah. We apologized to each other. So is this what they call getting bamboozled? <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> that was horrible. You get no points for that. A half hour's worth of polling is enough to convince us not to quit our day jobs. We return the raft to its owner and head upstream again into ever shallower water. Finally, we have to stop. There's more water up ahead but it's on the other side of a patch of stones. So where are we supposed to take this shot? Uh, that looks really, thinking, really shallow. I'm thinking up there, against the current over rocks. All right, get a boat up there. That sounds a bit masochistic. I guess this is where we get off. <laughs> we break out the flat bottom skiff. It's heavier than it looks. Now we know why we needed the smaller boat. I think we're stuck already. Okay, take it out deeper, take it out deeper. <laughs> I think we need to trust our lead boatman. Oh, I think he just got water in his gumboots. <laughs> Slow and steady, I guess. Uh -huh. It's getting easier. Ah, uh, here we go, here we uh, go. Momentum, momentum. Momentum, yeah, keep it going. <laughs> We're stuck again. <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> it takes us 15 minutes to get the skiff to the other side. That's when we learn that there's another portage just up ahead, and another one beyond that. For centuries, the people that have lived along this river have had to be pretty rugged, able to paddle and portage almost all day long. Jeff and I, not so much. We're ready to move on. 
we now have a better sense of what the old river was like in the past. And we're about to see the future of the Yangtze and what all the changes have been for, the world's biggest dam. We're getting ready to go back down river, a four-hour ride on a hydrofoil that will take us to one of the most ambitious and impressive construction projects in recent history, the Three Gorges Dam itself. I sure hope the hydrofoil is a little more efficient than our bamboo raft was. The brand new city of San Do Ping is right next to the dam. We want to see it even before dropping our gear off at the hotel. After reading so much about the scale of the project, it's hard to know what to expect. Will it feel like we're looking at one of the wonders of the world or just another big construction site? We ride up to where the water level will be in just a year or so. This definitely be sick of the stairs, doesn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this thing's perfectly designed for bringing us up here from the boats up to the uh, where the new water level is going to be. Yeah. Funky little uh, half ski lift, half escalator, half elevator sort of combo. Yeah. A ten-minute walk later, and there it is. Our first impression, it's really big. When the dam is finished, it will have taken over 16 million cubic meters of concrete to construct. The dam will be approximately 2.3 kilometers long, 185 meters tall, and five times larger than the U.S. Hoover Dam. Behind the dam, the waters will rise until they form a lake that's 600 kilometers long. And the 175-meter depth will allow more shipping and provide 18,000 megawatts of power. It's hard to believe, but the rising waters will submerge all those beautiful canyons and gorges we've just seen. I mean, it seems like the Chinese are really selling Chinese greatness here. They didn't just build the dam big, they built this whole place big. Yeah, it's, it's just fascinating to see the actual structure that's reshaping you know, the entire Yangtze. I mean, it's the concrete and all of that over there that's making those people have to relocate and, you know, changing their farmland and just, yeah, the whole structure of this place. It's, it's kind of wild. Man, you don't really get a sense for it till you're up here. It's huge. So that's, that's what moved over a million people out of this region. Adjacent to the dam, a five-stage shiplock will raise and lower the ships a distance of 113 meters from the artificial lake above to the Yangtze River below. Oh, check out the boats going through the locks now. I mean, it's crazy. It seems like the builders of this were trying to rack up the most Chinese superlatives ever. <laughs> yeah, what they get, they have the most concrete, Right, the, uh, the most hydroelectric power generated from any kind of dam. Yeah, and it's the highest of any dam in the world, the biggest difference between the top level and the bottom level. Huh. It's just huge. I mean, it, it's like people sat in a room and said, how can we break every right. record in the how book? How many pages can we assign to ourselves in the Guinness World Book of Records? Exactly, and then you just hope that it all works. Yeah. According to the Chinese government, the dam will be able to withstand anything nature or man can throw at it. Supposedly, even an atomic bomb. You know, you gotta hope it holds because the majority of the Chinese population is living, you know, downstream from that. So if there are any problems with it, you know, that's, that's gonna be ugly. I mean, it has the potential to be, you know, one of the biggest ecological disasters out there. Well, not to mention the ecological impacts upstream. Yeah. I mean, in the reservoir that's now created, like what's going to happen to to the life that used to be there? And is the water going to stay clean? I don't know. You want to go see how this damn thing works? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Already the dam has raised serious questions. 
Environmentalists are concerned about the buildup of raw sewage, sediment, and toxins that are now trapped in the huge reservoir. They used to be filtered out as they moved down the river and out to sea. But now these hazards will affect all the people and wildlife in the Yangtze River Basin. It's hard to imagine a project this massive ever being attempted anywhere else in the world, where the potential risks would almost certainly doom it before it got off the drawing board. There were protests and concerns about the Three Gorges Dam in China, but they were quickly brushed aside by the central government. We stopped to shoot a five-story tall ferry boat as it is hydraulically lifted from the river to the lake. When the dam's finished, the five sets of locks will be able to transfer about 100 ships daily. As the sun goes down, we aim our cameras to the west at a giant lake that's already begun to form behind the dam, knowing that the next time we come back here, everything will have changed again. Our journey along the Yangtze is almost over, but for Jeff and me, no trip is complete without breaking out our cameras. But as exciting as the views are from the ground, we've heard it's not the only way to capture the Yangtze. We've heard about a little entrepreneurialism taking place just south of the city and decide to check it out. Everyone expects that taming the Yangtze will bring more tourists into the area, and the guy we're getting ready to meet has made a little business for himself giving tours of the river and the dam from the air. Man, we've spent all of our time on the Yangtze so far in the water. I can't wait to actually check it out from the air, you know? It's going to be so cool. He mentions that he has another ultralight that can take off and land in the water. I figure I have to give the Yangtze River Special a try. Do we have any parachutes or life vests, or do we not need either of those? OK. Oh, wow. I can't hear a thing. Is this my uh, go-go speed racer uh, costume? <laughs> With the visor? I love the windshield. Yeah, you look, you look like a real pro. It's a uh, small step for one man, a giant leap for the Hutchins brothers. Well, Pete, we had 27 years together. It was fun. I enjoyed it while it lasted. And what better way to, uh, to go? When we first started to take off, I thought we'd never get much more than 10 or 15 meters off the ground. I was definitely mistaken. It's a really loud ride, but the views are spectacular. There's something about seeing a landscape from the air that gives you a completely different feel from seeing it on the ground. We move up the river for a kilometer or two, and then turn around and head home. Uh, I thought the river was beautiful from down below, but it's nothing like from up top. How was it? How was it? Man, P, that was, that was phenomenal. You've got to try it. It's seriously, yeah, it's, that was unbelievable. <laughs> Just for the sake of being different, I ask if we can try taking off and landing from the small airstrip out back. No problem, he tells me. <laughs> the sun is setting as we take off. Skimming over the river, I'm struck by the thought that humans are the only species on Earth with the power to dramatically alter the landscape we share with every other species. And I also wonder if those changes will work out for the betterment of the planet, or whether a hundred years from now we'll look back on the Three Gorges project and realize it was all a terrible mistake. 
I guess it's one of those times we can honestly say, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> what a ride. What a ride. Our time on the Yangtze River is coming to an end, and Pete and I are still trying to make sense of what we've seen. You know, before coming out to the Yangtze, I had this image in my mind that, that it wouldn't be anything like the old Yangtze, the gorges and the mist and everything you see in paintings, and I was actually really surprised. You can still see how the landscape out here is going to inspire a whole generation of artists. It is, it's totally different from, I think, how, how both of it expected it to be. People seem pretty excited about, about the change. I mean, it's a real upgrade for them in terms of, you know, just lifestyle. They have working plumbing, they have schools for the kids, you know, I mean, all that kind of stuff. And frankly, like, I, I was expecting people to be a little more sort of sad about the change. Clearly, the development along the Yangtze has already had a huge impact on the environment and people's lives. But since changes are happening so fast in China, there's little time to think about the long-term implications, let alone protest. The one thing that it seems like we've heard is that they miss, it's something sort of intangible. They miss the, just the feeling of their old place, of, you know, of, of the, their home where they grew up and probably a few generations before them have, uh, you know, have lived. Yeah, when I was on our boat and I was talking to the mechanic in the back, I mean, he was, he, he mentioned how, you know, the, the progress has been good in terms of the ease of life and, and health care and schools for the kids and everything. But he said there's the thing that was missing was the feeling of the old town, right. kind of like the romantic ideal of it. And, you know, he said a point that I can totally relate to. He said everybody loves the place they grow up. And that probably explains our relationship with China. Yes, it's exotic and dynamic and beautiful. But mostly, Pete and I love it because it's where we grew up.